Hi everyone, David Wood here with Brother Rashid. Brother Rashid. Yes. I've been hearing about this place called Israel for a little while. You heard, yeah. you heard of this place? I guess, with yeah. the news? Yeah, I, I've heard about it on the news. And I've been watching lots of, uh, lots of programs, people explaining the situation. And as far as I've been able to gather from watching news programs and especially from watching Muslim videos explaining the situation, here's what happened. Yeah. For many, 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 many centuries, you had a group of people right there yeah. in Palestine. They're called the Palestinians. And yeah. They're there minding their own business. And then all of a sudden, a big group of Jews show up, push them off their land, kick them off their land, uh, force them into camps, and then Jews take over and begin oppressing everybody. And so now you've got these people who are forced off their land by Jews. They're forced off their land, and now they're freedom fighters just trying to get their land back. And who, who would deny a person a right to try and get your land back once you've been kicked off your land by what are now occupiers? That's the version of events I'm, I'm getting from the news. Now, now, do you think, how accurate do you think that is? I can add to it, they, they also give an example. If somebody comes to your house and take over all the, the, the rooms in your house and leave you in a small corner, what are you going to do to him? And they, they, they give different examples or kick you out of your home and took it and took it. Yeah, that's it's not self-defense, right? I mean, it's self-defense. It's going to self-defense. The problem, it's not true. It's like the, the Jews, they came from Mars or from another planet as aliens and suddenly they popped up there. Or the version they give is like they came from Europe. I'll be, that's not totally true. You have to say some of them came from Europe, some of them were there all the time, and some of them we kicked from our Arab countries. Wait, just to be, just to be clear, the, the Jews who are there now, the Jews yes. who are there now, yeah. you're saying they came from different areas. Some, yeah. there had always just been Jews there. There had always right. been Jews there. Uh, some Jews moved there from Europe, yeah. and some Jews moved there when they were kicked out of Muslim countries. That's right. And like, so it's kind of a mixture of various, of various groups there. By the end of the 19th century, there were more than 25,000 Jews in that piece of land. So long before Israel, long before, before the, the foundation Israel. Of, yeah. uh, of Israel. We kicked out of Arabic or Arab countries through years and decades around 850,000 people. Jews from Morocco, Algeria, Egypt. Some of them, they were kicked out before the foundation of Israel. Some of them during the foundation of Israel, 1948, some of them after. So people do not pay attention to details. When they say, let's send them back to Europe. Well, how about the ones we kicked out from Morocco? Who's going to bring them back? Are you going to give them their lands, their homes, their jobs, their mo money? Or you could, even, you could even go back to the origins of Islam when Muhammad uh, expels or exterminates three Jewish tribes of Medina. Following the reasoning here, that land should be given back to the Jews. Yeah. Muhammad, uh, Muhammad uh, conquered the, the oasis of Kaibar, subjugated the people there. Eventually, Umar kicked them out because Muhammad said that he wanted no Jews or Christians in the entire Arabian Peninsula, even though they'd been there for centuries, yes. expelled them, said, hey, you were here before us, but get out now. And that was perfectly, that's perfectly fine, according to Muslims. But if we're, if we're going to talk about, uh, hey, giving back land and so on, then, I mean... Jews should be given land in, in Muslim countries across the world. First of all, they existed for thousands of years there. Second, it's not true that that place was a country and another country took over. It's, for example, in Morocco, 
it was a country called Morocco. France came into Morocco, occupied the land, but still there is France. Mm -hmm. So we can tell, go back to your country. This is our country. It wasn't like that in uh, Israel. That land never was called, th there was no state called Palestine. So it was, first of all, it was under the Ottoman occupation. So this is, this is an area of the Ottoman Empire. Yes. So there's the Ottoman Empire, and there's a part of it down here. Yes. Okay. And when, when the Ottomans were defeated with the British, it was under the, 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 the British mandate. So the Ottoman Empire fights a war. Yes. They lose the war, and, and now your land is controlled by the British because yes. you lost. And then it was divided. That whole region was divided to countries. Jordan didn't exist. Lebanon didn't exist. Other places didn't exist. So they started dividing. Oh, let, let, let us give this land to these people, all of them in the 1920s. So uh, Lebanon, Jordan, and then the turn uh, Syria, for example. And when when Jews saw Arabs are taking these lands, they say, "Hey, can we have a land for us because we are afraid of these guys? Every time they get mad, they kill a bunch of us. Mm -hmm. Can we have like our own state?" And uh, the British said, yes, I think we need to think about it. That's the Bill for Promise in 1917. They said, we will think about it. We will discuss it. Then it came the UN proposed, proposed a two state there, one for the Arab Palestinians, one for Jews, Palestinians too, because that's their land. The, the people think Palestine is, is a country. No, it's just a land called Palestine, the land of Israel. And, and that's what Jesus called it, by the way, the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I think it was in the second century, the Romans named it Palestine after the Philistines in yes. kind of a derogatory sense. Exactly. So when, when the UN proposed to uh, Arab countries, hey, can, can Jews have a country for their own? They rejected it. It was two states. More land for them than today, actually. And they said, no, we don't want that. So Israel went and they declared themselves as a state. They said, fine, you don't want a land for you. We want a land for us. So in, in May 1948, they said, we declare we are an independent Jewish state. On the 14th of May. The 15th of May, Arabs attacked Israel, the new state. They got defeated. They lost more land. They waited years in 1967. They said, let's do it again. They gathered more countries. They attacked. They got defeated. This time, they lost the West Bank because it was under Jordan. They lost Gaza. It was under Egypt. They lost Sinai, which was uh, and and their, um, uh, I mean, belongs to Egypt. They lost the Golan Heights. They lost so many lands. Egypt, after that, negotiated with Israel. They say, can we have just Sinai? And like, I don't really care. They say, peace. You sign peace. Something called peace. No wars. So they signed. They got Sinai back. Syria still waiting. They didn't get the Golan Heights. Palestinians, they choose violence. So now people who are saying Jews, never Israel choose violence, actually. Always Arabs were the aggressors. 1948, 1967, 1973. All of these dates, they were just attacking Israel, trying to get rid of them. And actually, the most famous slogan in the Arab world was, we will throw them in the sea. We will just get rid of them and throw them in the sea. Why? They say they cannot have an Arab Islamic land. Period. Not one inch, not 10 inches, not even one meter. They can't, zero. Actually, in 1967, I will read this to you. After their defeat, 
They went to Sudan, to Khartoum, and they made a huge conference, and they came with what was famous back then. They called it the three no's. No peace, no negotiation, no recognition. They choose not to recognize. Now they want to go back to 1967, give us well, the land that, which is the West Bank and Gaza. But you, you, you choose violence. You choose to fight. So it's not accurate that Israel took a state called Palestine, kicked the Arabs out of it, and they, they just like came from Europe. That's really a false narrative. People should dig a little bit into history and should find out. So in so the the myth the myth is there there's this group they're the Palestinians they live in their land that is Palestine they have their country and then they get invaded by Jews at some point kick them off their land and now they're fighting to get their their land back that that was theirs that's the myth the reality is you always had you always had some Jews there and you had other groups there. You had Arabs from from other from other areas and you had Assyrians and you had all kinds of people. You had Christians, you had Muslims, you had Jews. Um, Jews historically, wherever they go, end up being persecuted at some point. And so they have to keep being exiled from wherever they go. They end up being exiled. Yes. And so some Jews. This is this is the the thrust of Zionism. Hey, w when we're when we're getting in trouble in various places and people are persecuting us, uh, what if we had our own place to go right. that we would actually be safe and could defend ourselves and not rely on other people to defend us because they will turn on us very quickly. That's true. And then so some of them go there and they're just buying land. They're just buying yes. properties and yes. stuff when they're going there, buying more and more land. And then eventually you've got, but that's, that's not its own country. That's a, an area of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire fights in a war, loses. Then that area is under the control of the British. Yes. And there are Jews there. There are Christians there. There are Arab Muslims there. And the Jews say, hey, can we have a piece of land here that, is, that, that we control? Yeah. Because we don't trust these guys. I mean, keep in mind, this is right after World War II. Yes. Hitler was meeting with the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem True. on plans that after he finished up there in Europe, he would come down and help them exterminate the Jews down there. Yeah. And so it kind of makes sense for Jews to say, can we please not be under, can we please have an area where they are not under, these guys who openly admit that they want to exterminate us, yeah. are not in control over us. And there were some massacres during those times before 1948. Arabs attacked attacked Jews, and there, there, was a, uh, there were some wars. We called them the, the Harb al-Turuq, it's, it's like the war of streets. The Arabs did just attack Jewish homes and they just burned them because they heard they want to take over, they want to be a state. So let's eliminate them before anything happens. So they were attacking them. And actually, I have a friend, he told me, well, my grandpa used to be in Haifa and we still have the keys. So you, you are not right when you say they didn't take our homes. Actually, they took my grandpa's home. And I asked him, your grandpa, was he fighting with them to have a state or against them? He said he was fighting with the Arabs against them. I said, okay, if he was the enemy mm -hmm. from within, what do you think will happen to him? Like in any state, somebody yeah. who is pulling his arms to you and he's saying, get out, I'll kill you here. When you win the war. What are you going to do? So that's what happened to some. They took their homes because they lost the war in 1948. Not because they didn't want them to live in Israel. Because right now there are two million Arabs who are called Arab Israelis who have an Israel, um, an Israel passport. Yeah, so as long as, they didn't, as long as they didn't fight against Israel, yes. they were allowed to stay there. And a lot of the people that are now considered refugees were groups where the other, the surrounding Arab countries said, hey, as soon as opening day, we're going to go attack these Jews. Yes. Everyone else, get out of here. Yes. If you don't want to be, if you don't want to be massacred too, get out of here so we can tell the difference. Those who left, those who left got off the land so that Jews could be massacred. Well, Jews won the war. The Arabs who stayed there, they were fine. They're, yes. still, they're, still, part of, they're still part of Israel. Yes. The ones who left to get out of the way so that Jews could be exterminated, then they were told, actually, we don't trust you guys to come back, to come back in here. We don't yeah. trust you guys to come back in here because you are you are in favor of us being exterminated. And and now when they say Israel is an occupier, the the term 
occupier has two meanings, and actually Muslims and Arabs are fooling Westerners with this term, because in reality, the United Nations and other nations, they, they call Israel as an occupier, but why? Because it still didn't give full independence for Gaza and the West Bank only. Yeah, so that's when, when a Westerner, when a Westerner, when a college student is saying Israel's an occupier, they're saying, hey, you're, you're still, you're not giving Gaza total freedom, so you're occupiers. Yes. Okay. Arabs and Muslims, they think that whole land belongs to Muslims. And the Jews, seven million Jews, should be kicked out, sent to the sea, killed, whatever. They should not have an inch. So the occupier should give us the whole land back to Arabs and Muslims. So when they go into, in protest with them and they say, free Palestine, huh. they are fooling them. Free Palestine in what sense? Give them the West Bank and Gaza or give them the whole land and, and leave somewhere else. And from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Yes, that's exactly, give us the whole land. Yeah, and so this is, a, in logic, this is called, this is called a, the fallacy of equivocation. You're yeah. using the word in different uh, ways in order to mislead people. Yeah. But so just to recap, when, you know, a, when a college student on a campus is chanting free, free Palestine, they're saying, Free Gaza, free Gaza, free the West Bank yeah. from interference. Yes. You're pointing out, and that's what they mean by occupiers. Ah, yeah. Israel's occupying that. You're pointing out that Israel tomorrow could say, okay, Gaza, West Bank, totally independent. They're their own nation. We won't, we won't, we won't touch them. We won't bother them. Muslims would still call them occupiers. Of course. For Hamas their land. would not accept that. Yeah, and so you, you've got these college, and they're, they're, they're chanting too. Yes, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. They don't know what they're talking about. They're exactly. actually calling for the extermination of, of Israel. Israel. Exactly. And they don't know it. They think they're calling for, for the protection of Gaza. It, it, they're calling for genocide, actually. They, they, they don't know it. And this is the problem. United Nations and 163 country recognize Israel as an independent state. They have the right to have that land, including Morocco, Bahrain, Egypt, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, including these countries. And you find Egyptians, for example, uh, free Palestine. Your country signed a deal with Israel recognizing that piece of land belongs to them. Not to you, not to any Arab country, not to the Palestinians themselves. So if, if you are fighting against your country, and, and it's, it's an irony, find Jordanians doing the same thing. Your country signed treaties with Israel. And so if you are saying this, means like you are contradicting your own country. You couldn't have peace or Sinai back to Egypt without recognizing that land belongs to Israel. You couldn't have peace in Jordan without that. So you are enjoying now peace just because of that. So if you wanted to stay at war, you should have declared it back in the days, and it could have been a different story right now. And so uh, I have to say, given the hostility, so you pointed out, um, you know, a, play, a plane simply lands in, in Dagestan, and... The, air, the airport gets swarmed. Yeah. The airport gets swarmed by people who are looking for Jews, yeah. going after Jews. Uh, checking passports and uh, the looks and everybody. Even one is checking the engine of the, the plane. Like, yeah, in looking case, in there, looking, like looking for where they're hiding. Somebody hiding a, a behind a tree or a stone. I mean, think, if you believe they've been transformed into rats and so on, <laughs> you believe they can hide in, in little places like that. It's so unbelievable. And, and yet it, it all goes to sort of reinforce the idea of why Jews wanted a place that they control, right? Because, you know, before, before World War II, even if you looked at the, you know, the, the entire history of the Jews, everywhere they've been persecuted, you could say, well, yeah, that was in the past. That was, you know, that's in the 1500s or the 1600s or something like that. We're in the modern world now. Jews are safe in whatever, wherever, whatever countries they go to. Yeah. And then you're in, you know, Germany and all the surrounding countries, they start loading them, loading Jews into uh, cattle cars and hauling them off to be exterminated. Yeah. That's modern, that's modern, super developed Germany. In fact, there were people who had escaped from concentration camps and went back and warned 
Jewish towns, hey, do you know what they're doing? They're taking us to camps and working us and starving us to death and tossing us into ovens. Yeah. And the Jews didn't believe them in these towns. They treated them like you're crazy people. What are you talking about? Germany, yeah. the, the place that has all the physicists. Yeah. Germany, the place that's producing all the operas right now. Are you crazy? These are the most these are the most developed people in the world. Civilized, and they're, yeah. they're they're sending them off into 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 in, in cattle cars and so on. So anyway, it, it's that whole perspective that Jews are safe in in Western countries. That just fell apart. That just yeah. fell apart after World War II. Yeah. And they, they, they had a, a pretty solid case for where they need their own area. Yeah. And then they start getting attacked. I mean, they, they'd been attacked for centuries in, in Muslim areas, but now it sure. gets dialed up. Yeah. And so then they need a place where they can go. And it's just amazing that the world is still saying, well, you don't need that one place where you can actually yeah. defend yourself. Wait, you can't even take a plane somewhere without being without people being ready to attack you. And they are attacked now, even in the U.S. and the U.K. I mean, uh, protests that are pro-Israel, they get attacked. And they, uh, in, in, Austra in Australia, they are calling them gas the Jews. And they, they want that to be back. And actually, I, I have seen on social media so many places they are posting pictures of Hitler mm -hmm. and they say like he he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So they, they wanted them to be killed. And, and let me say this, Dave. This is attached to religion. Why Muslims, they don't want Jews to have that piece of land? They have, they have many uh, countries. 49 Muslim, yeah, just, Muslim majority. Just make them look good. Look at Yemen, for example. W what did you do with it? It's, it's ugly. Nobody want to live there. And it's a disaster. Look at Libya, for example. So that piece of land, like you are telling me, like you need it so bad and you want to do something with it and go to Syria, go to Iraq. I can name all of them. They are all failing states. Even Sudan, what did you do with them? Nothing. So the, the, the whole idea, the Jews should not have a Muslim land. Any Muslim land belongs to Muslims. And actually the Hamas charter says this, the land belongs to Muslims, not to Christians, not to Jews. Even there are Christian Palestinians there. No, the land doesn't belong to them. They can be guests, okay. And they're, and they're our protection, the means, but they cannot own it. It belongs to us. The same thing, they're still calling for Endelus, the, the, mm. the, the Iberian Peninsula. They still, they still think one day they will get it back because once a piece of land becomes a Muslim land, that's it. We marked it. It will never be back to a Jew, to a Christian, to a Gentile, to a polytheist. No, it's, it's marked. It's like the dog when he goes and he pees around mm -hmm. so that, okay, right. I marked right. my boundaries. Mm -hmm. You never go to them. So Muslims actually peed all over the, the Middle East and North Africa and all that. And they said, okay, this is our land now. Nobody comes here and takes it. And they actually, they actually, their commentators base that on the, on the Quran verse, drive them out from whence they drove you out. Even though that's talking about Mecca, they'll apply it as a general principle that anywhere where you control it at some point and then you get driven out of, then uh, you have to keep, you just have to keep fighting until you eventually get it back. And Israel's the focus right now because it's kind of the closest to home. That's the closest to the heart of the Muslim world. And it's Jews, so it's it's dialed up. But uh, you know, t two things here. One, you've got all these college campuses uh, saying "Free Palestine" and "From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free." These guys are—they're so dumb. Yeah. They're actually calling for Hamas to take over. They want a like. What what, what do you think would take over if if, uh, if Hamas won? It would be Hamas. Hamas yeah. would then in be, be in control. Actual an actual terrorist group would be in control of that land. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is, even if you gave them everything they want and said, okay, we're just gonna give the entire land to Hamas to take over, they're gonna take over the government, attention would immediately shift to Spain, yeah. to other places. Of course. Right, and then, and then that would be, and then it would be, you know, from, uh, from the Mediterranean to, uh, to the Atlantic Ocean, uh, Spain must be free, and they're gonna have to have Spain. David, it's a religious war. It's not because of the land. People think, oh, because Israel is occupying the land. It's a religious war. I'll tell you why. I have a, a very good example. 
In Morocco, we have two cities in the north. Moroccans believe it's theirs, it's ours. Spain is, they belong to Spain right now. We cannot have access to them unless we have a visa. Geographically, they are in our land, but um, the, the administration, everything belongs to Spain. They have like a, a barrier and we cannot cross it and you have to check your passport and everything. I have never seen a protest in any Muslim country, including Morocco. We want that land back. And this just tells you why you have never seen anyone doing that? Because they turned Palestine into a religious war. So you find a Muslim in Pakistan, free Palestine. You find a Muslim, uh, uh, it's an irony, for example. We have a city close to those occupied cities in Morocco. It's 40 kilometers from them. I saw the other day protests, people, free Palestine. I was yelling at him, I was like, just free the city next to you. It's only 40 kilometers from you. Why you are you trying to free a country that is 4,000 kilometers away from you? That just shows you because the Hamas was able to incite Muslims all over the world and tell them this is a religious war. It's, this is between Jews and, and Muslims. And this is actually the prophecies of Muhammad are now being fulfilled and we have to kick them out and we have to invade and they will hide behind the tree and behind the stone and, and say, oh, Muslim, come kill me. So they are looking forward to, to fulfill those prophecies and kill the Jews, get the land back and it's the end times. And so we have, uh, we have the armies of Muhammad, they storm out of uh, Arabia they go across northern Africa up into Europe, conquering and conquering. They, they head east all the, way out to, all the way out to India and China, conquering, conquering, conquering. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Ottoman Empire loses a war. And everyone says, hey, wait a minute. We, we cannot, at this point in history, we cannot trust the people around the Jews to have control over them because yeah. we know what they're intending. Yeah. Therefore, Jews are gonna get a piece of their own land. That's it right. makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. You've got, you've got all these Muslim countries. It makes perfect sense for Jews to have one spot, yeah. one spot that they actually have control over. All the responses, oh no, they could be safe in other lands. That was all like destroyed. That was completely yeah. destroyed. You do not know when people are gonna turn against Jews and start killing them. And therefore they got one little spot of land and that becomes the focus for decades now of the entire Muslim world, no, we cannot allow Jews to have one inch of land that we do not control. And that's the situation. And so we end up with a, with a complete myth. Uh, there's this group there, they're called the Palestinians. They've been there forever. And Jews came down from Europe and took their land from them, pushed them off, and now they're freedom fighters. That's a myth, that is a lie. It's complete deception, it's not what happened. In reality, there were Jews there, there were Arab Christians, there were Arab Muslims, and people realized, hey, Jews need some of this land that they control, and other groups can have other land in the area, but Jews need at least some land that they control, and the Muslim world has declared that that is completely unacceptable, and are willing to attack Jews around the world in response to that, right. but the fact that they are willing to attack Jews around the world anytime something goes wrong and they want to run out and attack Jews is kind of the clearest proof why Jews need a spot. If they're Definitely. not going to be safe anywhere else in the world, if they can't go to Dagestan without being attacked, seems like they need a, they need a spot of their own. All right, so uh, guys, uh, everyone needs to do a little bit of studying here, especially uh, Christians. Um, who are going to be interacting with various people, and especially college students. Guys, you're, you're hearing all these things from your friends. Do a few minutes of research and be able to uh, expose some of the lies that you encounter. Because at the end of the day, if you want to say, if you want to say 
um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's wrong to oppress these people. It's wrong to kick these people off their land. At least know the facts. At least know the facts. And know what you're saying. Know the meaning of the chants that you're saying on these. When you chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Don't be thinking in your head that you're talking about Gaza. That is not what that's saying. That's, that's calling for the annihilation of Israel, and it's calling for genocide. So be aware of these things and learn the basic facts and share them because that is one of the, the only ways past this problem.